The American Egyptian Women of Influence podcast aims to be the American Egyptian culture podcast of choice. We believe that our knowledge and our participants' stories will greatly enhance understanding of both cultures. I'm Karen Leggett Abouraya. Nermeen Boutros was the New York Post hero of the day early in the pandemic for working more than 80 hours a week as chief medical resident at Brookdale University Hospital Medical Center in Brooklyn, an epicenter of the pandemic in its early days. She graduated from Cairo University and came to the United States in 2009. She had grown up in Sohag in Upper Egypt, so she went from Upper Egypt to Cairo to New York. Nermeen, as chief resident, what is your responsibility and did that change or just get more massive with COVID-19? In general, as a chief resident, um, you are responsible for a lot of administrative work uh, in addition of your duty um, as a resident or as a physician. Um, like um, scheduling, schedules, um, um, lectures, um, conferences for the residents, um, being the connection between the hospital administration and the resident physicians. Uh, but during the pandemic, the, the responsibility became uh, more huge because uh, we had to come up with some emergency plan to solve. Uh, we had a uh, physician from uh, dentists and from psychiatry uh, working, uh, yeah, working with us. And um, um, we had uh, to create, new, help in creating new units, more ICU units. We found ourselves transforming like regular uh, medicine uh, unit or medicine floor into an ICU unit. These were residents who were who are newly practicing as doctors, right? So that and suddenly they're they're thrown into yeah. a crisis, and and you as well. Exactly, exactly. But yes, we are new doctors, but. I learned from each one of them amazing lessons. I saw how everyone is, how everyone is sacrificing and putting all the effort. Every doctor was putting her heart and soul in the work, risking their life. Um, very brave the way they were facing that uh, unknown disease. It was very brave, very inspiring. Um, they were working nonstop, um, no breaks. Um, we had shortage in the, in the national shortage of the PPE, and they were were doing amazing. No complaints. Um, they were really, really very inspirational. I learned a lot, a lot, and I saw real heroes during that time of pandemic. Now it it seems that, that they, of course, these were all new doctors and they all got into medicine and you yourself for all sorts of different reasons, but this was never what you anticipated doing. <laughs> no, it was not in our plans at all to go through a pandemic, but uh, all of us did a great job. All of us did a great job working nonstop, putting um, the patient care before anything else, uh, doing everything possible. And despite the, it's a shortage in everything, uh, but they did an amazing job. Despite the lack of resources at that time, but they were phenomenal. Were you involved in patient care much or were you organizing all of the other residents to do the Both. patient care? Both. I, you were doing everything. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most challenging for you, aside from just the sheer monumental nature of what you were doing? What, what was a particularly challenging day that you recall? It was very emotionally intense to see a patient dying. Uh, and I, I feel that I, I, I want to cry. I want to, to have this meltdown moment. I, want, I was very tearful at some point and I wanted to cry, but I had to hide it and um, pretend that I'm strong so I can encourage the other residents how did you deal with your own risk of possibly contracting COVID-19, especially since you were going home to two young children? Yeah, that, that was a, a very scary part for me. I was not, I didn't worry about myself. Uh, I was worrying about my kids. 
I was thinking that, okay, maybe it's, it's good that I'm staying at work for uh, long hours. So <laughs> I'm, not in con I'm not in contact with the kids I, or I'm seeing them for a few hours. So that's, that's good. Um, I was literally disinfecting, like take off the clothes, work, everything at the door. And I was wearing masks while I'm home, staying away from the kids. And at some point I was wearing masks while I was sleeping. Because I was I was so scared that oh I am shitting the virus. <laughs> so I had to wear a mask even when I'm sleeping and close the doors and everything and no one is allowed to enter my door and my room, my bathroom. Uh, everything was locked because this was the isolation area <laughs> in the house. And uh, the nanny was the was a great help at the time because she was an she was closer to the kids and I was trying to stay away. And have you ever, have you ever had second thoughts about your, your choice of career? Uh, since you were suddenly, you, you did all your, your learning and you're continuing to learn and continuing to study, but, but now you've also been practicing. Have you, have you ever had moments where you say, did I really choose the career I want? I, I didn't doubt the career uh, because, um, that's not always wanted, but I had some thoughts of doubt in the beginning when I came that, oh, um, I'm not from here, I'm uh, IMG, I'm, uh, I'm not an American grad, um, I'm, I'm a mother, I have two kids, it's gonna be difficult for me to keep the balance between being a mom and between being a doctor. Um, um, I have Egyptian accent, uh, all these stuff. I had all these thoughts inside my head, but uh, I was wrong. I was wrong because I, I I decided that if I, I keep thinking this way, I'm holding myself back and I'm not gonna make any improvement. I'm not gonna achieve uh, any any anything in my life. And uh, once I stop thinking this way, and uh, I think that what this country offered me, what America offered me, is an equal chance like any other um, any other women who were born and raised in the United States and graduating from medical school there. If you come to our hospital, all the doctors there are immigrants. That was very, that was very impressive. Everyone is coming from different country, from different background. Many women from uh, Nigeria, from Iran, from China, uh, from Cuba. Uh, everyone is coming with a different story to tell, with a different experience and uh, with an uh, an impressive journey and uh, that's that changed a lot in me because uh, I felt that I'm surrounded with a very amazing variety of beautiful people and uh, I was learning something from each one of them I, I I stopped thinking that I'm not capable I cannot make it I felt that no I can't do anything I want in this life if I if I really work well, that's a very hopeful note to, to close. Thank you very much. And thank you for the, for the work you're doing and, and good luck. Thank you so much for having me and uh, thank you for the amazing podcast you have.